everyone, welcome along, welcome to the west coast of Australia. Beautiful springtime here in the southern hemisphere. G'day Michael, nice to see you. We're looking at the old abandoned Fremantle Power Station. Amazing old building. G'day Mike. Amazing old building, completely abandoned. It's been abandoned. Uh, thanks for inviting followers, Michael. Yeah, this is the uh, the cooling uh, water in inlet for the or outlet. I'm not sure how it works. You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming along. This is the uh, the water. I guess it's for the cooling of the generators. Uh, but it's all abandoned, so it's an amazing old building um, from X Men. And yeah, it's a bit like that, Michael. <laughs> you had to make a fantastic movie. I did a, I did a couple of scopes from here in 2015 and 2016 inside the building when they had no security guards, but they've got security guards in there now, so you get busted as soon as you try and get in. Uh, although I have done it, but uh, yeah, it's a bit hairy. So it's an amazing old building. It's all graffiti coloured, but it does look like uh, some kind of movie set got graffiti all over it. The other side's got most of the graffiti. That's my favourite little sign there. I went to the UberX, yeah. I went to the gym today. Tell everyone. I love that sense of humour. <laughs> exclamation marks, exclamation marks. So you have to be pretty athletic to get up there, to climb up there and paint that sign. So well done. It's probably about... Uh, let me see, one, two, about five or six metres above uh, Urban Explorer. Yeah. Is that, is that what you're calling me, Michael? I'm not sure. Uh, uh, yeah, it'd be great to... Hello there. Um, yeah, that's right, Udia. Udia. Good to see you. But it's a very atmospheric building. It's got a lot going for it. Um, it's been abandoned since the 1990s and... Uh, I used to go up in it, take my class um, when it was an operational power station. Uh, just an amazing building. G'day, how am I doing? I'm doing pretty well, thank you. Yeah, investigating urban areas and derelict buildings, etc. Yeah, okay, Michael, that's what. Uh, it's a great, uh, it's a great title. I like it. I'm happy to adopt that. But I can't go in there anymore because I'm chicken because there's a couple of pretty heavy security guards who uh, patrol it and they take it very seriously because a lot of young people were having rave parties in there and stuff and uh, at least one person I know of died because um, there's, there's pits in there where they had the generators and turbines and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit dangerous. Um, but I used to go take my class up to the top, up to the roof area bloody young people always having rave parties all they ever think about is having fun damn them all <laughs> why don't they get a job and a haircut <laughs> so i used to get up on the uh, roof deck there it's absolutely amazing view over garden island and rottnest island and the indian ocean so it's pretty uh, it's pretty cool i really like it and this is uh, just a beautiful area so we've still we're having a lot of community debate about what to do with this building uh, I'd like to see it as apartments and gal art galleries and restaurants and cafes and stuff. But uh, yeah, some people want it torn down. I reckon it's too too good a uh, an example of its uh, kind of uh, whatever brutalist art or brutalist architecture or something. I'm not sure what you'd call it, but uh, yeah, it's got a lot going for it. I like it and uh, sort of a symbol from my childhood always thought it was haunted when I would drive past or in my parents car as a child so uh, you can see it would be very pretty with apartments and art galleries and uh, artisans and cafes and restaurants and bars and stuff it would be really nice and the views are stunning I'll show you the views uh, when we walk down to the beach it's right on the beach here down at uh, CY O'Connor Beach so uh, we're going to take a bit of a walk so let's go just perched here on a rock checking out the scenery and it's time for a beach walk so that's it the old abandoned Fremantle power station yeah it does look have a Gotham City uh, look about it Michael it definitely does yeah definitely has a Gotham City look about it <laughs> 
yeah but the views from the top there from the roof are just astounding don't know if you can make out that osprey that's flying above it I'm pointing in the general direction no he's probably too small to pick up on camera an osprey hunting so let's go for a bit of a walk just got to watch my footing here folks because i'm perched on a rocky ledge i was perched on that on the rocks there just overlooking the water and that's the water i think it was a cooling inlet or outlet so uh, probably used for cooling or maybe for wastewater from the plant i'm not sure but it did connect to the ocean but it no longer does it's uh, the sand has encroached on it there are fish in there i've seen guys fishing for a, a flathead or cobbler cobbler like catfish so we're just going bush here folks i'll take you down and show you the whole building just because we're here urban exploring to to take up michael's uh phrase i like it do a bit of urban exploring i know about urban foragers there's lots of urban foragers around Fremantle. generally people who work for restaurants go around collecting all kind of edibles from uh, people's gardens and verges and stuff so it's an enormous building just goes to the left there another I don't know 50 meters or so and then I wonder if you can see that bird that's flying about there can't see it on my screen it's a bit hard to catch but it's an enormous building completely abandoned and completely empty inside and all the windows have been smashed all of those were glass windows um, but no longer are there, all been smashed out. And a lot of graffiti, most of the graffiti is on the other side, the eastern side, this is the western side of the building. But I reckon it'd make fantastic apartments. So I'd put my name down for one of those penthouse apartments up there, because I know the view from the roof is just astounding. Okay, so let's go, we're walking down. This is the Indian Ocean we're walking to. Just about a hundred meters from uh, the old power station. Thanks everyone for joining. My name is Ian on the beach coma. Going to be taking you for a walk on the beach here. Beautiful Indian Ocean. So this is uh, just to the south of Fremantle. If you're new to my scopes, uh, I've got the GPS on, so you can see the map. If you click on the little androgynous person on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen with the numbers next to them, uh, you'll see go straight to a map and it'll show you exactly where I am. Usually it shows that I'm walking in the water. So uh, I don't know if Periscope are trying to drown me or what. Look, tracks folks from some kind of lizard probably a blue tongue or a bobtail and this here I'm thinking it's a push bike track I don't think it's a snake track <laughs> I'd like to think it was a snake track it'd be a big a big snake but I think someone's wheeled their push bike through there so that's the water inlet outlet slash um, for the Fremantle power station thanks Steve uh, Dean for uh, tweeting, retweeting, I really appreciate it. And this is where that waterway used to connect to the ocean here. It's got kind of grids over it and it's all been graffitied quite tastefully, not too bad. And it's similar to the graffiti that's inside the building. A lot of graffiti inside the building. Every wall space is graffitied. Or some, we should call it street art more than graffiti. Sand people, they always travel in single file to hide their numbers, that's it. The dreaded sand people. What were those worms in the book or the movie June? Those, were they sand worms, those uh, creatures? Could be a sand worm. But the inside of the building is completely uh, covered in uh, uh, urban art, street art like that so if you can imagine every wall 
and the roof and ceiling is all um, covered inside the building. It's easier walking along beach sand. Yeah, and it's much easier walking in on the beach sand. great old building and this is where the water inlet outlet emptied into the ocean or connected to the ocean like I say I don't know if it was an inlet or an outlet but I, my guess is it was for cooling the turbines don't know but there's a real big one in the latest episode of Mandalorian Ma Ma okay is that a, a Netflix show or something Mandalorian I don't know that one, Michael, but I'll check it out. Is that on Netflix? You can see they've had some... Uh, California should get behind New York and destroy the NRA. Well, I think the NRA... Disney Plus, thanks, Michael. I haven't got Disney Plus, but uh, I might try it for a free month. Um, Star Wars series, okay. <laughs> Nice dogs. Yeah, so you can see there's been earth, uh, earth moving equipment uh, brought through here. They're doing some kind of construction over there. It's also on Hulu, okay. You can see the earth moving equipment over there that's um, gouged out the beach here uh, coming through. So I'm sort of walking in the tracks of large diggers you can imagine them, they would have looked amazing going along the beach here. Yeah, I don't have Hulu either, but I'm probably able to get a free month or a free couple of weeks or something. So I might check it out. Same with Disney Plus, I think I can get a free couple of weeks. I might check it out. I don't know if anyone's seen uh, Sarah's, Sarah Cooper's latest, um, latest outing adventure on uh, Netflix. I recommend it highly. It only came out uh, this week. Uh, it's called Everything's Fine. And Sarah Cooper, she's got her own show now on Netflix. So I recommend it highly. If you've got Netflix, look up Sarah Cooper, Everything's Fine. She just takes off Donald Trump incredibly. She's amazing. Absolutely amazing. So this is the Indian Ocean, folks. And uh, from the roof up there, this is the view you get out to Garden Island out there. If you can see the white sandy cliff there, that's the northern end of Garden Island. Uh, that's our naval base over there, the Stirling Naval Base. It's where we keep all our submarines. It's our submarine fleet uh, moored out there, penned out there, berthed out there stationed out there <laughs> so that's Garden Island folks and this is the Coburn Sound or if you're from Sydney the Cockburn Sound the Cockburn Sound or the Coburn Sound <laughs> I think we politely call it the Coburn Sound uh, but it's spelt Cockburn Sound, sound. <laughs> and the suburb is Cockburn or Coburn as we call it Perfetto so this is uh, C.Y. O'Connor Beach here. I'll tell you a little bit about C.Y. O'Connor when we get down to his, um, to his final resting place. And it's the Indian Ocean. It's not a surf beach because it's protected by, um, by reef and the islands out there. So you've got Garden Island there. Hi, Linda. And Karnak Island there. I don't know if you can make it out just behind that boat that's out there. Similar to Bruce Coburn, that's right. So we're walking now along Siwa O'Connor Beach. And like I say, I'll tell you about him when we get down to his uh, memorial statue. This is the Indian Ocean in Coburn Sound, and uh, it's a really amazing uh, habitat for uh, all kind of marine creatures to breed in. It's got a huge seagrass um, forest in it. I guess you'd call it an underground forest of seagrass. So lots of creatures like to feed off the seagrass. 
and breed in amongst the uh, seagrass. So it's a pretty important environment, the old Coburn Sound. And that's where we came from, the old abandoned Fremantle Power Station. You can see the southern, the northern end of it now. Once again, there's got the graffiti right up there. Got to be pretty fit and a bit of a daredevil to get up there and do graffiti. So kudos to them. As you can see, it's a pretty overcast day today. We're in spring. So yesterday was uh, like about 37 degrees, 36 degrees Celsius, which is around about 100 Fahrenheit. So uh, we had a real taste of summer yesterday. It's a bit cooler today and um, young and dumb. <laughs> Some of them aren't dumb, but they're a bit reckless, a bit reckless. Weren't we all like that in our youth? Sort of felt invincible, so we'd take on anything. I'm sure we all were. Yeah, so like I say, it's not a surf beach. It's uh, protected by surrounding reefs and the islands out there in the Indian Ocean. Yep. Yeah, so check out Sarah Cooper's uh, new show that she hosts. It's called Everything's Fine. And this week's episode had um, Helen Mirren on it and some other uh, famous folks. Had a few cracking thunder. Yeah, Michael, I saw the thunderstorm that uh, I think you were scoping. Uh, someone, yeah, someone was scoping. Yeah, she had some amazing storms in Sydney. Sounds like you're going to have a very wet winter. We'd love to have a wet winter, um, but it's because we're in drought at the moment. This dog's heading out to get a stick. You didn't scope, Michael. Someone did. I uh, can't remember who. Or maybe I just saw it on the ABC News or something. Um, this is a dog beach here. You can have your dog off the leash here pretty deserted here. If you have a look on the map, I'm about five kilometres or more uh, south of uh, Fremantle, which is the harbour town of Perth. Perth being the capital city of Western Australia. I encourage you to have a look at the map by clicking on the little person in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and uh, playing around with the map. Because you'll see me, I'm a little red dot. Yeah, check out Sarah Cooper. She's great. She's got her own show now. Everything's Fine on uh, Netflix. I loved it. Very funny and uh, lots of interesting uh, voiceovers with Donald Trump's voice. Yeah, so this is a dog exercise area and also a horse exercise area. You can bring your horses down here or your horse down here and gallop along the beach, canter or trot along the beach, whatever you like. But uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. So, uh, and there's an old shipwreck up here which you can, uh, we can check out. Quite interesting, but it's pretty isolated beach. Not many people use it, mostly dog owners. There's a, a group of dog owners who kind of um, sort of have adopted the beach. They clean up any trash and stuff and make sure it's all good. Love the sound of the waves. Beautiful. So temperature, I think we're heading towards a maximum of 25 degrees Celsius, which is 75 Fahrenheit uh, today. So a uh, perfect sort of a day, probably about 22 or something down here where I am. Oh, I forgot to do the water test. I am walking in the water. The water temperature is quite warm. 
I'm reckoning, I'm reckoning it's about 18, 18 to 19 degrees Celsius, the water temperature. Beautiful dogs. He's a bit reluctant to go in after the ball. Doesn't want to get wet. <laughs> he wants to wait for the ball to come to him. Go on, you can do it. He's not going to pick it up. <laughs> Hilarious. Another wonderful dog. Looks like you're Gracie. She would love the beach. Okay. Fantastic looking dogs. I'm not a dog person, so I don't know that. It looked like a, some kind of, almost like a greyhound, but I'm sure it's not a greyhound. Could be. Is it an Irish setter or something like that? I don't know. I don't know dogs, apart from the kind of Kelpie dog. Hello, Ian, here for a bit. Hi there. Chris Cross, nice to see you. Thanks for coming along. In the US, North Carolina, La Labrador Mix. Okay, Labrador Mix, thanks. So this is a submerged wreck, folks. A shipwreck that happened in the early uh, 1900s. Um, I used to know the name of the ship, but uh, you'll have to Google it. Uh, it was some kind of cargo ship. It wasn't a passenger ship as such, but that's the bow of the ship there. And the rest of the ship extends back that way. But I said, folks, that this is C.Y. O'Connor Beach. And there is a statue of C.Y. O'Connor out there on his horse. And there's always a shag with him. That's C.Y. O'Connor's shag there, the cormorant. That's C.Y. O'Connor's statue there. Hello, Rob in Illinois, nice to see you. See why O'Connor was uh, a, uh, an engineer, state government engineer in the uh, late 1800s. G'day, Rob, nice to see you. Late 1800s and early 1900s. Um, and he designed the Fremantle Harbour, which is to the left, Dean. Uh, he was uh, a uh, state government uh, engineer. He designed Fremantle Harbour. And he also, and lots of uh, railways and railway tunnels and stuff like that in the early settlement of Western Australia. And at the time, in the late 1800s, we had the gold rush going on. Our gold rush was in a place called Kalgoorlie and Coolgardie, which is uh, 300 miles or 500 kilometres uh, to the east of here, over to uh, going east in the opposite direction from where I'm pointing the camera. I'm pointing the camera um, to the west at the moment. So see why I kind of designed, because there was gold being found and enormous amounts of gold, but in Kalgoorlie, uh, how would they anchor it to stay in the wave? Yeah, interesting question. It's uh, cemented on a cement base. Um, so see why I kind of, as uh, state government uh, engineer, civic engineer or civil engineer uh, designed a pipeline, a water pipeline going all the way from Perth here up to Kalgoorlie, a distance of 330 or 340 miles, just over 600 kilometres. At the time it was the longest water pipeline in the world and uh, C.Y. O'Connor was one of the first, probably the first uh, victim of media bullying. Uh, the media all got onto him and uh, there were cartoons drawn about him saying Seaway O'Connor. His name was Charles Yelverton. So they said that Charlie, Charlie was going to send uh, free, uh, the state of Western Australia bankrupt and they called his uh, pipeline a pipe dream. And there'd be cartoons of him sitting back smoking a pipe with bags of money saying that he's corrupt and he'd uh, sent the state of Western Australia bankrupt. In any case, because of the incredible media harassment, he, um, he came down here, rode out on his horse, pulled out his pistol right in this very spot here and shot himself in the head. 
So this is where he died, folks. Charles Yelverton O'Connor, a uh, Fremantle guy, well, originally from Ireland, with a name like that. Came out here on his horse and shot himself in the head. He was suffering from classic depression because of the media bullying that he was subjected to in all the local papers and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's a tragic story. And as it happened, after he killed himself, turned out the water pipeline uh, really opened up an amazing amount of Western Australia because it worked. It was then, at the time, it was the longest water pipeline in the world. Yes, it is sad, uh, over 300 miles. And it meant that we could get billions of dollars from um, from gold being extracted up in Kalgoorlie. It also opened up because there were outlets all the way up on the 330 mile stretch. There were also water outlets that irrigated the uh, inland area between Perth and Kalgoorlie where they were had growing wheat and had sheep farms and other uh, uh, produce. So it, it really opened up Western Australia and caused an incredible boost in the early 1900s. But this is where Charles Yelverton O'Connor rode his horse out and blew his brains out. So Vale Charles Yelverton O'Connor, that's him there on his statue with his old buddy, the Shag, a cormorant there that's always out there looking for fish. So that's the story of Charles Yelverton O'Connor. Tragic story, he's now considered a state hero, if not a, na a national hero. So let's move on, and this beach is named after him, C.Y. O'Connor Beach. It's just to the south of Fremantle. If you have a look on the map, you'll see Fremantle. It's probably about seven kilometers from here, possibly 10, not sure. Thanks for those beautiful hearts. I forgot to say, I really appreciate you tapping those hearts. And folks, if you're not following me, please click on this link and uh, give me a follow. I'll try and bring you beach scopes as often as I can. Quite a story. It's an amazing story, yeah. He was really a victim of uh, media bullying. Not social media, because there wasn't social media, but just the media. He left behind a wife and I think seven daughters. I uh, could be wrong on that, but he was a good Irish Catholic, so uh, no contraception for C.Y. O'Connor. Uh, yeah, he had a whole bunch of kids, and their relatives are still living in Fremantle. They're the O'Connor family, and they married into other families, um, so they're a kind of established Fremantle family, and C.Y. O'Connor is now considered, like, a, like I said, as a kind of state hero, state of Western Australia social media of the times that's right yeah yeah exactly yeah if you look him up it's an interesting story cy o'connor is gold mining still a lot yeah um it's all contingent on the price of gold you know they're all mostly open cut there is an underground mine at Kalgoorlie, a big one that goes down over a mile in the old money uh, underground. Um, but most of it is open cut uh, mining um, and it depends on the price of gold as to whether it's viable or not. But they're still pulling gold out, not in the kind of, no, none of the huge nuggets in that, that in the late 1800s they were getting. But uh, yeah. Would have been an exciting time to be an alive and see why O'Connor caused a massive g'day, caused a massive economic boom for uh, West Australia after he died because he just opened up. So to the east here, 330 miles is Kalgoorlie. That's 600 and something kilometres. It's all arid and desert, semi-desert, and there's no water. So imagine a pipeline going from here or Perth, which is 20 kilometres over that way, 330 miles up into the arid region. It just opened up a huge amount of farmland and also made gold mining, um, you know, a major industry of Western Australia. And then because of the uh, water pipeline, um, you know, it opened up farmland for wheat and sheep. And so wheat is still one of our major exports and sheep well, 
they used to say that Australia was built on the sheep's back. Uh, and so there's a lot of truth in that. We, we produced a wonderful wool called Merino wool. I'm sure you've heard of it, Merino wool. And the Merino sheep, sheep thrived in Australia. And so, uh, you know, uh, because of that water pipeline, we had big flocks of Merino or herds of Merino sheep and uh, huge areas of wheat growing so and all, as well as the gold mining boom so you know Australia really prospered from CY O'Connor you know he just can't be underestimated he's uh, a, did an amazing job and <laughs> we're all really proud of him and it's a very sad story but you know he's got his memorial there with his friend the shag so it's all good, folks. Life goes on. And his grandchildren and great-grandchildren are still, uh, you know, thriving members of the Fremantle community down here. I encourage you to click on the little person in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Uh, you'll see a map. And if you've got an iPhone, you can pinch the map and zoom out and get, get your bearings on where we are in relation to Fremantle, the harbour town of Perth and Perth, the capital city of West Australia. So it's all good, folks. Beautiful day here. Heading for a top of 25, which is my favourite uh, temperature of all time, 75 Fahrenheit. So it's all good. Perfect day in paradise here today, folks. Pretty overcast, as you can see, but I don't mind the overcast. Apparently, we're getting a bit of a storm tomorrow, a little bit of rain. We're in drought conditions, so um, rain would be very appreciated. We just come out of winter and we didn't get our average winter rainfall, uh, which is usually not very much, but um, you know, so we're heading into drought conditions for the summer. So it looks like it's gonna be a very hot, dry summer in, West, in Perth, West Australia. Thanks for those beautiful hearts you're tapping. I really appreciate them. Let me know that I'm connected. They also do good things for my heart. <laughs> this is the Indian Ocean here, a place called Coburn Sound. It's surrounded by islands. There's islands out there. And that's where we started our journey from, the old Fremantle power station down there, now abandoned. Seaway O'Connor Beach. And I'll swing around and show you Garden Island. It's Garden Island there. You can see this white sand cliff on the northern end of Garden Island. That's uh, our naval base where we keep our submarine fleet. Yeah, there's lots of sharks. And there is Karnak Island, the home of the tiger snake. That island, Karnak Island, is totally infested with tiger snakes, which have adapted to, uh, to eat a, so a, a sole diet of baby seagull chicks. They only eat baby seagull chicks, the tiger snakes over there. It's a strange story, because most tiger snakes don't eat such things, but the tiger snakes on that island there, Karnak Island, eat entirely um, baby seagull chicks, which is a pretty interesting story. Hi. Hi. Yeah, tiger snakes are deadly. Yeah, they're our most poisonous snake. Oh, possibly apart from the death adder. Yeah, tiger snakes are really poisonous. That whole island is infested with them. Do they swim? Yes, tiger snakes do swim, yeah. I think most snakes swim in general. Um, yeah, they uh, use the same movement that they uh, uh, use on the ground, on the land, uh, and they're good swimmers, yeah. Yeah, I've seen snakes swimming in streams and lakes, and, um, 
on the odd occasion, not often. But yeah, I think most snakes swim on the surface, you know, not underwater because they're oxygen breathers. So this is a groin here marking the end of Sea O'Connor Beach. So we've got to go up, up the sand dune. Yeah, so there's a lot of snakes around at this time of year. A groin, a G-R-O-Y-N-E, Y. It's got a Y in it. We call them groins. It's a rocky man-made structure um, protruding into the ocean, made by dumping um, huge boulders into the ocean and building it up to form a platform like this one here. Welcome. I'm going to take you out on the groin so we can check out the uh, surrounding area. Has COVID? No, um, we've had no community transmission of COVID for six months now, so we're totally free. Um, we locked down our borders and all went into isolation in March, and uh, we we got it really early. So, um, you know. Um, local state government has done an incredible job. Well, it wasn't luck, it's just good planning. Um, you know, we locked down in March, closed our borders, didn't let anyone in or out, and uh, we were all forced into isolation or lockdown. Businesses closed, a lot of businesses went broke, and um, yeah, so we've had it under control. We've had no community transmission for six months now. Um, so the only, um, the only COVID in the Western Australia at the moment are from Australians uh, returning from overseas and they have to go into um, enforced isolation in quarantine hotels at their own expense for 14 days. So if you're an Australian, uh, yeah, well, yeah, it was good management by our head of state, our head of government, uh, Mark McGowan, who's our premier. Name of the gold mine town again, Kalgoorlie, K-A-L-G-O-O-R-L-I-E, Kalgoorlie. It's an interesting history if you look up the uh, history of Kalgoorlie. Yeah, so we're on top of COVID and we've just, uh, just announced we're opening our borders on the 15th of November. So in 16 days or 15 days from today, we'll be opening up our borders. Uh, so we'll see how it goes then. So people from interstate, from the other states of Australia are going to be able to come into Western Australia and West Australians like me are going to be able to travel, which is going to be great. Make America great. And then Julia free, Julia, yeah, yeah. Julian Assange, uh, I don't know. There's mixed feelings about Julian Assange. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't really got an opinion, but yeah. So that's where we started from. Oh, look, and here's our local helicopter. I think it's the Shark Patrol helicopter. I can't see it on my screen because it's too glary, but I'm um, pointing in the general direction. Yeah, there it is. It's our shark patrol helicopter. Checking out to see if there's any sharks in the area. Do a great job. So, 
So that is Siwa O'Connor Beach. There's the Fremantle Power, the abandoned Fremantle Power Station that I started the scope from. And that's Siwa O'Connor Beach with Coogee in the background there, or Coogee as they call it in Sydney, as Michael Oud will call it. Um, Coogee there. And this is Siwa O'Connor Beach that we just walked up. And in the centre of screen is the shipwreck there in the centre of screen. You can just make out the little dot. And just to the right of that is C.Y. O'Connor, Charles Yelvin and O'Connor's um, statue with him and his horse, where that's where he blew his brains out, committed suicide in the early 1900s. So that's C.Y. O'Connor Beach there. We walked all the way along. And here we're out on this rocky groin, G-R-O-Y-N-E, groin just made by dumping all these rocks into the water and then uh, you know making some kind of pathway out onto it but it's great for fishing off it also the reason for them is to protect the beaches from uh, the movement of sand i'm sure you know most places around the world have them uh, you might call it a breakwater we call it a groin um, it's to stop the sand eroding from the beaches. Uh, if you didn't have a groin here, there'd be no beach on C.Y. O'Connor Beach. It'd be right back, the ocean would encroach on, uh, right back into those dunes there. So it does a good job. Nice apartments for the rich and famous down here with the gorgeous ocean views. Wife getting over COVID. Wow, she's only months, 200 miles. We've not seen her in two. I'm so sorry to hear that, my friend. Uh, it's a very serious disease, particularly if you're of a certain age with, uh, you know, with pre-existing conditions. So personally, I'm terrified of it. So, uh, you know, I, I'm nervous about our border opening up I'll most probably start wearing a mask uh, whenever I go out in public once our borders open up because we've all become um, you're both 60 yeah me too uh, yeah we, we, when we open our borders up in 15 days time I reckon I'm going to be wearing a mask because we've all become a bit blase because we've had no community transmission for six months so you know, we feel like we're pretty much invincible when we go shopping and out to restaurants and stuff. But uh, after the 15th of November, it'll be a different story. I'll probably be wearing a mask everywhere I go, an N95 mask. They work, folks. I know you've been told differently in the USA, but N95 marks, masks wear work. I mean, it's what all the professional medics, uh, medical profession uses. They're not cheap, but uh, if they save your life, they're, uh, they're uh, invaluable. So that's the groin we walked out on, out there. People fishing out there. And this is South Beach now, folks. You can see Fremantle Harbour in the background there. See the Star Wars figures there? They're the cranes that lift the uh, containers off the ships in Fremantle Harbour. And that harbour was designed by C.Y. O'Connor, built and designed by C.Y. O'Connor, Fremantle Harbour. So it's got a huge legacy, old C.Y. Charles Yelverton O'Connor, Fremantle Harbour, the, what was then the longest water pipeline in the world. 330 or 40 miles. You work at a medical device company, we mask every day, yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I hope you spread the message that uh, masks actually do work. They save lives, folks. Definitely masks save lives. I feel like people local here are not serious about COVID and lately our numbers are climbing, yeah. Every state, I think, in the USA uh, has climbing COVID numbers. It's a total tragedy and over 230,000 people are dead. You know, think about that in terms of the Vietnam War, which uh, about 56,000 people died. The Korean War, and I'm not sure how many thousand people died in the Korean War, but 230,000 deaths, US deaths, is... Uh, is enormous and it's an absolute tragedy being as how many of those could have been prevented with proper precautions 
and a proper strategy. So this is South Beach here, folks, just south of Fremantle. You're scared about it too, plus I don't, just don't want the test. I had the test. Uh, my, I had a sore throat and a cough, and my doctor said, go get tested. I found the test to be absolutely fine. It was no problem at all. Uh, I think in the early days of testing, um, they didn't have quite such sensitive tests, so they used to shove the thing right down the back of your nose and right down into your throat. Um, but nowadays, they're, uh, they're not, you know, they don't go mining in your nasal passage or in the, down your throat into your tonsils. They just take a little swab. Uh, I encourage you to get it, get the, not be afraid of the testing because it's um, pretty harmless, honestly. Look, you can see erosion here. Even though we've got the groins on either side of this beach, uh, still get erosion, which would be much worse if it wasn't for the groins. You can see these trees have uh, been undermined by the ocean and uh, they've fallen in onto the beach. And there's a fence up here. This fence is just new newly constructed. I haven't seen it before. There's some kind of sign on it, so I'll see. I was tested twice for pre-surgery. Piece of cake, yeah. Yeah, I found it to be no problem at all. But I think um, they learnt fairly quickly how to do it. I think in the very early days, March and April, I think they were going mining into your nasal passages and down into your tonsils. But now they just take a gentle swab. Rural farm acreage, stay home, we're not... Yeah, that's the best way to go. You're, you're isolated because of your ge geography. That's great. Yeah, so a fence here, folks. Um, I'm on the other side of it and came from the other side, so I might not be supposed to be here, but I'll check out what it says. Beach access temporary closed. Keep clear. Wow. Look at that. I came in from the southern end, so there was no sign on the southern end. So, um, yeah, look. Beach is closed off because of the erosion, I guess. All that erosion through there. But interesting. So this is South Beach here, folks. It's a uh, dog-friendly beach. You can have your dogs here. You can't take your horses here, but you can take your dogs. And the dogs don't have to be on a leash. You can see they're free to play. Are they? Beautiful little dog. Hi from Sydney. Nice to have you along. Welcome to West Australia, the west coast of Australia. This is a place called Fremantle, just south of Fremantle. I'll show you Fremantle Harbour over there. See the Star Wars figures or the orange dinosaurs that lift the containers off the ships. And there's the West Australian Maritime Museum, an amazing building. You're welcome, absolutely welcome. Uh, Rob, thanks for your comments. And that's the North Mole out there, the entrance to the Fremantle Harbour. The red lighthouse out there. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Well, there was no sign where I entered the beach from the south side. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. Yeah, as I say, look it up. Look up C.Y. O'Connor and that. It's an amazing, it's an amazing story. One of the first victims of media bullying. And look up, you'll see his cartoons. They made hideous cartoons of him. You know, really, really defamation stuff. Your English is not well from Russia. Privyet, Russia. Thanks so much for coming. Your English is a lot better than my Russian. So thank you. 
I really appreciate that you can communicate even just a little. So you can see apartments here. Bye, thanks for coming along. Got apartments there for the rich and famous. Multi-million dollar penthouses with the ocean views over the Indian Ocean. Like I say, I enjoy my beach. This is my beach therapy and I like walking in the water. I always have bare feet on the beach walking in the water. I reckon it's good for my blood. And I reckon the water temperature here is about nearly, probably around 19 degrees Celsius. It's quite warm, the water here, because it's not well flushed out. It's surrounded by islands and reef and the Fremantle Harbour to the north. Imagine waking up to a view like that. Vast Indian Ocean, it is vast, it's enormous. <coughs> Some kind of fishing vessel maybe out there, powering along. Heading out to Garden Island to the left of the stream. Beautiful walk in the water, folks. Really lovely. I recommend it if you can get to a bit of water. It doesn't have to be ocean. Maybe a lake, maybe a river. Put your feet in. It improves my mood incredibly. Yeah, that's great. I'm sure a lot of people around the world are suffering suffering a lot, a lot of suffering. 2020 has been an amazingly difficult year for everyone. You can see dogs are allowed to run free here. dogs running free and another groin here protecting the beach from erosion hi there thank you for coming along Uh, no, I won't be heading to Scarborough today. This is my beach walk today. But uh, thanks for reminding me. Yeah, I was at Scarborough this time last uh, week, the uh, weekend, um, Saturday here today. Probably about midday or just after midday now. You're heading to Scarborough. Hang on. Oh, it's Pedro. Pedro, you're heading to Scarborough. Sorry, Pedro, I didn't see you there. It's hard to read at names. Um, Pedro, are you going to scope? I loved your scope, um, the other, your last few scopes. You're doing wonderful scopes. Crocs this far south? No, no crocs. Crocs up in the tropical areas. A um, couple of thousand kilometres up north by the Tropic of Cap uh, Capricorn. No crocs here. Plenty of sharks though.
lunch with the girls today. Good on you, Pedro. Fantastic. You're going to eat at one of the lovely restaurants or cafes in Scarborough? That'll be nice. Should be quite a big crowd at Scarborough Beach today, I would think. Plackers by the sea, by the beach. Wonderful. Good burgers. I've seen it, Pedro. I must go and have a burger there. I hope you post a, uh, scr a shot of your burger and your meal on Twitter and I'll have a look and check it out. So that's another groin there protecting the beach. This one's working really well. The two groins here are protecting that whole beach area. Thanks, Pedro. And look, nice views from these apartments up here. They're all private apartments built about, um, I guess it was probably 15 years ago now, somewhere around that, as part of the South Beach uh, uh, re South Beach renovation, I guess. Here's our beautiful pig face. Thanks, Criss Cross. Really appreciate you saying that. Fantastic. So this is South Beach proper here. I'm just going to take you on the... Uh, away from the beach, just on the nice grassy area here for a bit of contrast, bit of variety. Should be lots of people out picnicking. The wind's died right down. Featured on the main page show. Wow, Pedro, thank you. You mean on the travel or on the travel the world? Um, I know on the travel the world they have a feature uh, page in the global stream, but the travel channel doesn't have a feature page. Um, and your scopes disappear from the travel channel as soon as you finish, which is a shame. Whereas, Pedro, you've got a hotline to the Travel the World channel and your scopes stay up there for a long while, which is great. I think it's on the travel page. Maybe, I don't know, I'm not sure how it works, Pedro. I just know on the Travel the World channel there's an actual feature, you know, where the the scope is played and you can watch it uh, from the lobby if you want. Whereas in the Travel channel, um, you have to actually click on the scope to go in. Yeah, so these Norfolk Island pines here have got some kind of disease, folks. That's why they're fenced off here. Um, they're in danger of branches falling and that. So... Uh, We've got a problem with the Norfolk Island Pines. Free barbecues down here. Nice area for free barbecues. And we've got a regulation style basket size basketball court, which is pretty amazing when you think about it down on the beach, especially in Australia, which is not a huge basketball uh, country. Not enough trees. What does the fence do? Just keeps people out because I think there's branches and uh, things falling from the tree because the trees have got a disease of some kind. It's only happened recently in the last 12 months. So it's a full-size basketball court, folks, which is pretty amazing. And you can see this is South Beach there. South Beach and a full-size basketball court. It's pretty good. And lots of murals on these change rooms here. I'll show you the murals. Pretty colorful murals on an otherwise very boring building, a toilet change room building, bathroom. 
got sharks and whales and orcas. It's nice, isn't it? Dolphins, dugons, and aliens. Don't forget the aliens. There's always aliens at beaches. And giant squid. Just did the classic Australian thing, folks. I just swallowed a fly. <coughs> so excuse me while I choke. Fly when it's summer, getting on to summertime, folks, and the flies are about. Just swallowed a fly. I don't know why I swallowed a fly. Perhaps I'll die. If you know the song. So clean looking. Yeah, beautiful and clean. Lovely cafe here. South Beach Kiosk Cafe. Beautiful green grassy area. Yeah, just swallowed a fly, folks. Part of the hazards of talking and scoping, walking. I think I'll die. There was an old lady who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed, swallowed a fly. Or is it a man? Perhaps he'll die. He swallowed a spider to catch the fly. I don't know why he swallowed a fly. Perhaps he'll die. So these are our local seagulls people. And I was telling you about the tiger snakes on Karnak Island. They eat the babies of these. They don't eat the eggs. They wait for the eggs to hatch. And then they eat the babies. The tiger snakes on Karnak Island about 10 kilometers out into the Indian Ocean. So you can see these magnificent trees that are everywhere around the southern part of Australian Ocean, the southern beaches of Australia on the, on the west, southwest, south and north, uh, north, hang on, south, <laughs> southeast. Sorry, just got um, bamboozled for a moment there. So you see these trees everywhere along beaches in Australia, in the southern half of Australia, or the southern third of Australia. But just a gorgeous day today, folks. I'm walking up to my push bike, which I've got parked up here somewhere. Uh, yeah, I've driven in Hawaii. Um, I've driven in Indonesia. And uh, I've driven in Ireland. Where else? Um, I think that's about it. Um, I actually, I drove in, in Amsterdam too. I drove in Amsterdam. Everywhere else I've traveled to, I uh, have not driven apart from those countries. Someone sneezing. It's got to be COVID. <laughs> no, we've had no community transmission of COVID, folks, for six months, so we're pretty safe. So that's South Beach. I didn't walk on that South Beach proper. That's a family beach. Hello there. Nice to have you along. That's a family friendly beach there. No dogs allowed, no horses or anything else. Just a nice beach place. Nice protected beach, safe for kids, with a groin at either end. Driven in Crete, that would be an interesting experience. Beautiful island, I believe, from what I've seen. Look at that, isn't that fantastic? That's gorgeous, I love it. Yeah, so I've got my push bike parked a little ways from here. So I don't have to walk all the way back to my car. I jump on my treadly, my push bike, and uh, yeah. That's not my push bike. I'm just gonna take you onto the beach.
So that's South Beach here proper, South Beach proper. The other side we we're at is just South South Beach. And this is the north side of South Beach I'm about to take you on. Um, this is a, another groin heading out into the Indian Ocean, the man-made groin. And this is the north side of South Beach, which is another dog beach, dog-friendly beach. So um, lots of dogs down here. Lots of people, lots of dogs. I expected there'd be more people today because it's quite a nice beach day. The wind has dropped, so it's nice on the beach. There was a bit of quite a strong wind earlier on. Living life, exactly. Living life. So you can see a man-made groin there to protect the, uh, the beach sand from erosion. And you can see dogs, it's a dog friendly beach. Don't have to have your dog on a leash here. Beautiful dog, that one. Hi. Loving the sound of the waves, lapping the shore. Looks like we've got a dog coming because of the ball there. No, I must have scared the dog off. Dogs are great, yes. I love uh, interacting with dogs. A dog would be a very useful thing in uh, COVID times. You haven't been to the ocean since 2005. Okay, in Mexico, but you'd have river, a river or a lake or something, maybe, I hope, that you can travel to, you know, within a couple of hours drive, maybe. But you're right, there is something special about the ocean. Something very healing about it. Ohio River, right. Plenty of lakes around, yeah, there's always for most people in the world, you know, within a two hour drive, there's got to be a lake or a river or, you know, a man-made kind of water, waterway of some kind. I mean, I know I'm exaggerating a bit, but I'm saying for most people in the world, because we tend to build our communities where there's water. Gulf of Mexico. How'd you go with that hurricane uh, that was there last few days? Hope it didn't cause too much destruction. Cali Ocean in 2001, last time. Okay. All right. California. That's 19 years since you've been to the ocean. Must be about time for a return trip. Do a 20 year reunion. Go back to California once we've got on top, on top of this COVID virus and head to the ocean. Looks like Moderna, Madeira, okay. I've heard of Madeira, is that on uh, Lake, um, Lake Como, is it? The Gulf Coast has been hit hard in hurricanes. Yeah, you've had several hurricanes. I know. So we've walked along this northern area at South Beach. 
go in and kick the water. Yeah, sure, sure. I've been walking in the water most of the time. I've been scoping. I'm in WA, yeah. So there's the water. Beautiful. I'd say it was around 18 to 19 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. Probably about 68, somewhere around there Fahrenheit. Colder than most um, USA beaches, I know. Your water temperatures are up in the early 20s, even 25 Celsius, 75 Fahrenheit in places like Florida. Looks cold. It looks cold, but it's not. Um, it's going to be 25 Celsius, which is 75 Fahrenheit, and there's no wind, so there's no wind chill factor at all. So we've walked the beaches. I'm just going to walk over to the uh, yacht club over here now, and I'm going to finish the scope with a view of the Fremantle Yacht Club, which is right here. Usually, because it's Saturday, um, they have um, uh, youth sailing. Um, they sail in these little mirror dinghies, sailing dinghies with a re retractable keel. I'll take you over and show you. They're the dinghies there, little sailing dinghies. They're not mirrors, those ones, I don't think. The mirrors usually have uh, red sails and they're a bit smaller. You can see the sign there. Fremantle Sailing Club Youth Academy. Palm trees, yeah, yeah, you noticed. Palm trees, bit of a strange thing, a bit incongruous in West Australia. They're obviously not native. Is this a high tax area? Being this close to the water. Um, the way tax works here, it's based on your property values. So um, yeah, property values are higher when you get closer to the ocean or to the river. So yes, um, property taxes are, um, are higher near the ocean, yeah but it's just based on the value of your property, the rental value of your property. Nice gardens here at the Fremantle Sailing Club. Very pretty. And there are the sailing dinghies there. Good day. Yeah, so on Saturday they have youth sales training and that's what's happening right here. How is income tax in Australia? Oh, it's pretty much the same as everywhere. You know, it starts off about uh, 18 cents in the dollar, somewhere around there. Once you get over about, I don't know what it is now, the tax-free threshold, about 15 to 20,000, something like that. And then it goes up to, uh, you know, 40 five cents in the dollar or something once you're earning over a million or so or five hundred thousand i'm not sure it's a pretty fair tax system but i mean we have free health care we have universal health care here that we pay for with our taxes so most of us are pretty happy to pay our taxes have i ever played frisbee golf i have played frisbee golf yes i'm a school used to be a school teacher and so i used to take my kids for frisbee golf all the time there you are, Fremantle Sailing Club, folks. Their official boat. And here's all the pens. Ever do a shoey? I'm, I think someone's told me what a shoey is before and I can't remember. So fun, yes. Maybe you mentioned a shoey before. That's the Fremantle Sailing Club uh, club room there. And this wonderful protected area here is where the young people uh, do, learn their sailing skills in these little sailing boats. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a, if you if you're ever going to be happy, this would be a place where you can be happy. It's yeah, free health health care. Yeah, free health care. Absolutely, I can go to the doctor any time I want, and I don't pay a cent. And all of my medications are subsidised. So yeah, we have universal health care here. No one has refused health care, hospital care, or doctor or medicine. No one's refused, you know, if they can't afford it. You know, no one's refused. So, folks, that's where I'm going to end my scope. So, thanks so much for joining. I'll just give you a follow request. If you're not following me, please click on that link and follow me, and I'll bring you uh, beach scopes, and uh, whether it's ocean beach or river beach. Uh, no, no, I uh, was diagnosed with something a month ago and I got to see my specialist um, within about two weeks. So, um, yeah, no, you know, but for some things, uh, you're absolutely welcome, everyone. Thanks so much for tapping hearts and thanks for your fantastic comments. It's the interaction with the comments on Periscope that make it fun. So I love you all and I'll see you again on the other side. Cheers. Bye for now.